Welcome to Universally Judged with Sierra Birchall. On the Universally Judged podcast, we share the stories that you haven't heard from pageant title holders, models, content creators, and actors. In each interview, our guests share a behind the scenes look at their life and the lessons they've learned along their journey. This podcast is created in collaboration with Dive Through, a mental wellness company that helps people dive through what they're going through. Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Universally Judged podcast. My name is Sierra Birchall. I am a mother, a law school graduate, a former Miss Universe Canada. I just so happened to place in the top nine at Miss Universe among 86 countries from around the world. If you guys know me and you know my story, you know that I was called everything from fat to overweight. I was told I was promoting obesity by just showing up at Miss Universe as I was, and my ultimate message became love yourself for who you are, love the skin you're in, you are beautiful the way you are and you don't need to change yourself to fit society's standards. As I sit with you today, I have an interesting story of how I got here, how I'm speaking with you and what that's looked like. It's definitely different than what you'd kind of imagine, but let me set the scene for you. In February 2009, I was in Saskatchewan at home with my mom. I was just going to bed and then I heard the smoke detector go off. I didn't really think too much of it. I mean, we've all burnt toast and had the smoke detector go off. It's gone off on its own, but something just felt a little different to me. I went downstairs to see what was going on and there was my mom trying to put out a fire that was engulfing our couch. Immediately my instincts kicked in. I called 911 and the woman on the phone said to get everyone out of the house, out of the house. This was February in Saskatchewan. If you guys know anything about the Canadian prairies, there was thigh high snow. It was minus 40. There we were standing outside in the snow, my mom and I watching our entire home go up in flames. We saw the lampshade go up and fall down in ashes. We saw the fire wind its way up the stairs. It got so hot that the glass of the windows broke. And in that moment, I had such a feeling of a lack of control. I couldn't control what was happening, but I can control how I was feeling. From then forward, we were helped a lot by the Red Cross, by our community, and I had this sense of wanting to give back. As much as it was sad to lose our belongings, lose the things that we had, we still had each other. And we had so much help from the community that I thought, how can I give back from this experience that I've had? From all the things that we've lost, I've gained this new sense of of embracing the people around me. How can I give that to others? So I decided to start volunteering with the Red Cross and I was aimlessly scrolling Facebook and I came across this ad for Miss Teen Saskatchewan, a pageant. I knew nothing about the pageant world, nothing about the pageant space. I hadn't even watched Miss Congeniality, but I decided, you know what? Maybe this is a way that I could give back to the Red Cross, give back to my community. I applied for Miss Teen Saskatchewan, I was accepted, and I went off to Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, that's like the big city in Saskatchewan, to compete for this provincial title. Just a few weeks after the house fire, I ended up winning Miss Teen Saskatchewan wearing a $150 dress from Moose Jaw Saskatchewan dress shop, and I went on to compete for the national title of Miss Teen Canada World held in Toronto. Again, I didn't really know what I was doing. I was just showing up as I was, showing the judges, showing the audience who I was, why I was there, and what I hoped to do with that title. I ended up winning Miss Teen Canada World. I went on to be the second runner up at Miss Teen World. I got to speak to over 16,000 young people at the different We Days. I traveled to Kenya, Africa to help build a school with Free the Children. And I learned then that the pageant world actually has a lot of really amazing opportunities. I decided to make it my goal to one day try to represent Canada at what I believe to be the ultimate pageant, Miss Universe. I first went after that dream in 2013. I was 20 years old. I was confident in who I was, but I definitely wasn't the woman that I am today. I decided to go for the title and I sought a little bit of help, a little bit of guidance. I sought a coach and the first thing that she told me was that if I wanted to win the title of Miss Universe Canada, I would have to do one thing for sure and that was to lose weight. I'd have to lose at least 15 pounds, she said, to even be competitive and the ultimate goal was to be as skinny as possible. 
I didn't really think much about this. I thought, okay, I guess this is what I have to do to try to win this title. Let's do it. Let's go for it. So I lost weight and I was already quite slim for myself as I, as I was. And I had to work out excessively. I had to basically starve myself to fit this standard, fit this mold that she told me I had to be. But I did it. I showed up at Miss Universe Canada being, you know, ultimately not myself. I was slimmer than I was before. And with the weight that I lost, I also lost my confidence. I lost the sense of who I was. I lost that kind of the... I lost the reason for why I competed in the pageant world to begin with, to ultimately show up and be myself, show the world who I was, and to be able to give back to others, give back to my community. I went to Miss Universe Canada in 2013 trying to be somebody that I wasn't. I ended up placing as first runner-up at Miss Universe Canada 2013, and I always jokingly say that I was the first loser, but it was the best thing that could have happened to me at the time because had I won and gone to Miss Universe in that state of feeling not sure of who I was, not feeling confident, comparing myself to all the other girls, feeling like I wasn't skinny enough, wasn't good enough, I would have crumbled under the pressure at Miss Universe. It still was my dream to ultimately represent Canada at Miss Universe, but it just wasn't my time. I decided to get some more experience and I competed for a title called Miss Supranational. Miss Supranational Canada is the competition I ended up winning to represent Canada at Miss Supranational. I had kind of a similar story to what happened at Miss Universe Canada where I tried to fit the mold of what they wanted me to be. I tried to be that perfect pageant girl with like the pageant body and all of that. Again, I placed as first runner up, the first loser. Again, it was the best thing that could have happened to me because I still knew that my dream was to go to Miss Universe. And what I learned along this journey was that I had to go to Miss Universe being myself, representing myself, trying to just represent who I was and not try to be what the world or what the pageant space told me that I had to be. I competed for Miss Universe Canada 2016. I was my healthiest mentally and physically that I had been in years. I was so confident. I was ready to take the title. I was in my second year of law school, so I felt like I'd accomplished more. I had more life experience. I showed up to Toronto. I ended up winning the title of Miss Universe Canada 2016. I earned the right to represent Canada at Miss Universe, and it was like a dream come true. But what I didn't know, what I didn't expect, was the level of criticism, the level of bashing that I would experience about my body from the journey of winning Miss Universe Canada to showing up in the Philippines at Miss Universe. People were saying that I had everything it took to win Miss Universe. I had the speaking skills. I had the stage presence. But what I didn't have, they said, was the Miss Universe body. I didn't have the body shape that it took to win Miss Universe. There were so many times that I wanted to give up on that dream of going to Miss Universe, of representing myself, representing Canada, because I didn't feel like I could once again fall under the pressure of trying to be something that I wasn't. I didn't want to show up and show the women of the world that you can chase your dreams, you can achieve your dreams if you just totally change. It just seems so crazy to me that sharing a message of loving yourself, being yourself, showing up as yourself was gaining national and international news headlines. I ended up placing in the top nine at Miss Universe. Despite people telling me that I didn't deserve a place anywhere, let alone at Miss Universe, I was called by none other than Steve Harvey into the top 13 at Miss Universe. I then made it into the top nine, and I felt so proud. Not just proud of myself, but proud that I was able to represent fully myself and any woman, any person who has ever felt like they're not good enough, that they don't fit in, that they don't belong. One of the my one of my most favorite things that I had from that experience was not just placing at Miss Universe representing Canada, but having people message me and say, when I was watching Miss Universe this year, I looked up and I saw somebody that looked like me. I saw someone that I could relate to. In you, I saw myself. That was so important for me to hear because I felt like finally, by being myself, I have now allowed other people to show up as themselves, to be themselves. And something else that I thought was so cool is that by me showing up in my swimsuit at Miss Universe, I had people tell me that I gave them the confidence to go to the beach 
not to ju- just go to the beach wearing a bathing suit, wearing a bikini, but to just step foot on the sand. And I love that because I think that's ultimately what the pageant world is all about, is showing people that they can be themselves. They can show up as themselves. It's about showcasing diversity, showcasing that women come in all different shapes, sizes. We speak different languages. That is what it is ultimately about for me. In the pageant space, in the modeling space, in the acting space, in social media, we are always seeing women in the spotlight. We are seeing women who have thousands, millions of followers, tons of likes, and we always think that they're living the dream. If I had that many followers, if I had that many likes, if I had that body, that look, those clothes, that makeup, I would be happy. But what we don't always see, what we don't always hear is the story behind the woman, the story behind the social media, the story behind that glamorous pageant walk, that winning crowning moment. We don't see everything that happens behind the scenes. That's why I wanted to bring to you the stories of these women. Miss USA's, Miss Universe's, social media influencers, content creators, models, actresses, actors. I wanted to bring these stories to life. I wanted to be able to show myself and show you guys that there's so much more. There's there's more value to us and who we are than having followers, likes, fame. That is what the Universally Judged podcast is ultimately all about, is bringing value to you, bringing you stories about these women bringing something and showing something that it's it's more than the surface what we see is a very small fraction of what goes on behind the scenes along my journey i have learned that by sharing my story i have been able to allow other people to live their stories to be able to live their lives to the fullest and that is what we are going to do here that is what we're going to share here is bring stories to you that will hopefully allow you to live your fullest story to live life to the fullest every single day show up as you are understand that there is so much more to life than the things that we see there is so much more than we see on social media and that the things that we bring to the world the value that we bring to the world is so far beyond the external it's not just about what we look like what we post what kind of clothing that we wear there's so much more to all of it there's so much more to life and as well living life to the fullest isn't just about reaching certain goals about having certain things but it's about fully loving and accepting who you are and being able to look in the mirror and know that the most important person to love accept live for show up for every single day is that person looking back at you in the mirror I hope you guys are going to love what we are bringing with the Universally Judged podcast. We have so many amazing things to share. It's just going to be so exciting. And I am so, so excited, so thrilled to have you along for this journey. You can find the podcast on my YouTube channel and everywhere that you listen to your podcast. I cannot wait for you to hear what we're bringing you and to get your feedback. See what you think. What kind of value is this bringing for you? And as always, like we want to know who do you want to hear on the podcast? Who do you want to see? Who do you want to hear from? And with that, enjoy. I think you are going to love it. And I I cannot wait to bring you all of these amazing episodes. Thanks for listening to Universally Judged. Be sure to subscribe to our show and leave us a review. If you want more great content, find us on Instagram at Universally Judged. See you next week.